What's going on guys? Sin for the win here. We are back with our franchise mode as the Buffalo Sabres and we're picking up where we left off here. A couple months into the new season here. 19-5-1, although we are slumping at 5-4-1 in the last 10, but what a beginning to the season. And since we've kind of taken that back step, I was considering trying Mayorov up on that uh, second line, although he is still listed as third liner, so... Maybe I just want to keep him here. It's very interesting that he is since his awareness offensively is at 88 and his shot, it's kind of mid to high 80s. I almost expect him at 85 overall to be listed as that second liner, but not so much. And that second line seems to be doing well enough together. I mean, McGrath and Middlestat really are tearing it up. Skinner, 17 points, 25 games played. It's not incredible, but that's what we have him. He's kind of spot filling these other roles. He does... Uh, his potential did lower to that top nine, so he might be declining. And Nylander doesn't look like he's going to become more than a third liner at this point. 82 overall, now 24 years of age. Uh, not looking great, but his production's still good. 15 points and 25 games played on that third line. He's got five points, two goals on the power play, so he's still looking good. So I think we're just kind of going to keep the lines as they are for now, since our team overall has been doing good. Well, all we're waiting on now is for uh, Rasmus Dahlin to come back. He's injured. He'll be back in two more games. So I think we should wait for that before making any sort of line changes. Let's just we can get our full roster back under us and see if we, uh, we'll do better. Again, we're not doing bad or anything like that. It's just we're technically slumping <laughs> from that beginning of the year where we went 14-1-1 or something like that. It's pretty crazy. So, all right, let's... Uh, I might just sim up to when Dahlin's going to get back and then sort of reassess there. Or maybe oh, I could probably just sim the whole month. Probably won't matter. So let's see. Another shutout against Carolina. I think that's like five shutouts we had this year. Our goalies are doing crazy good. All right. So there's Darlene. He is all back. Recovered from, what do he do? Like break his collarbone or something? He's fine. He could play. All right. Seth Jones back to there. And Ruda hops out. Now I got to remember all the lines that I switched up. I think it was a lot of it, actually, because, yeah, we put McGrath onto that top power play unit. How did he do? Four points, two of them goals, so it's kind of like I want to give him that time, but we need Seth Jones on that, on the second power play unit. He's got four points, too, so McGrath's going to have to probably just take a seat here, even though he has done well. Eh, he's still, you got to give Darlene that ice time. Even if he didn't get to score a whole hell of a lot. Yeah, Risto's only got three points on there. McGrath stepped in and did great, so it's hard to take him off here. In fact, I could sit Ristolainen. That doesn't seem... I mean, Ristolainen is already getting that top two times, so I could technically do it. But I'm going to go back to these combinations, and if it's, if it's still good, then I'm not really going to bother. Even though McGrath was doing pretty damn good there. All right, so he's back on the four, man. I think for the, yeah, the four on fours and stuff, I just kind of left. But the three, yeah, the three, three on three, I'll have to switch around. This is actually tough. Jones, 92 and 91. Risto, 91 and 91. So Jones is technically slightly better. And Darlene's better than both of them. So maybe Darlene, yeah, it's time for him to get that top time, I guess. So we'll go with Risto line and Jones behind there. Oh, my goodness. I just kind of noticed Darlene was at 90 overall. He still listed his top four. What? Hold on. Is he getting morale boosts? Uh, not really? Huh. That's kind of weird. Oh, well, the game lies sometimes, so maybe. Maybe that's the case here. All right. So that's taken care of. We can continue with the sim here. I'll just sim up. Ooh, Central Scouting has a new report, so we'll check that before we continue here. We got that Spencer Volt guy. What a name. Looking like he'll be going first overall. Center sniper. Oh, wow. Actually, similar to Miko Koivu. Interesting. No weaknesses, though, so he's not that similar to Miko Koivu. Ho <laughs> ho! Count it. All right, so, unfortunately, no mid round steal steals uh, scouted quite yet. And st same with the low elites. It might still be too early. I did. We did slightly improve our scouting, just not to the extent I wanted to with all the, with the six guys who were uh, on expiring contracts. I was hoping to find a lot better stuff there in the scouting pool, but 
Unfortunately, there was only Bs and B minuses. No A's. All right, so that's not a good trade. Let's decline that. Oh, that's a big loss. And we have an injury to our AHL here. So we'll fix that real quick. Locks it in. He went down. So Kronholm will hop in. He'll be the guy that we put in there. Oh, good. Three on three. Nope, shootout. Huh. Locks in was taking the first shot. Fuck it. We'll put Kronholm in there. I'm not as stickler with my AHL because we don't have that many of our prospects there. We do have them there. But we do have him playing. Got him in some special teams. I'm not going to go too crazy about the shootout lineups or anything like that. All right, that's two losses in a row, but we answer right back with a win. We're 23-7 and or now 24-7 and 1, which is actually kind of ridiculous, including the overtime losses. That's a still a 3 to 1 win-loss ratio, which is uh uh-oh. Olmark has a concussion and that's no minor concussion. He is out till the 20th of December. So we got to call up that really trash goalie again, but now I'm a little scared because he's going to play some games here. December 20th, the snow. I mean, I could call up Dano. He's 72 overall. But I don't want to... We can just call him Novikov, but he's going to do... Oh, man. This is when it does help to have a better AHL goalie in case of injury, but... Alas, we do not have one, so it's between a 672 and 61. It's, it's terrible either way. So I might as... Ugh. I might want to not disrupt... You know, I got to call up Dano because that's going to be a while. That's almost a, a full month here, if I'm not missed. Or no, are we in December? It's still... I still don't want to risk it. He might play a game. That's pretty rough there. Ooh, it looks like he was actually getting a few more starts in there, too. I could be wrong, but we'll see when he gets back, because looking at the games played... Ah, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, math. Okay. I forgot Rochester. It's going to be Wilcox starting now, and Novikov is going to get some backup time, but... Yeah, I just, in case that, that backup has to play a game, I don't want him to completely shit the bed. He can shit the bed a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's sooner than I thought. That's my bad. It said concussion, so I just assumed it was... We lost a few games right there. But all marks back. So that's good. Yeah, that was actually shorter than I thought. I made... I don't think Dano played a game. No, he didn't, so that was kind of useless. I thought we were way earlier. For some reason... I always do that when it comes to... Uh, yeah, he's played 14 games now, but he's killing it, so who cares? I'm just going to keep him auto-rotating, I think. Keep looking it up there. All right. Oh, I need to send the guy down. So we'll send him down, put him back in, into his spot, and starting goaltender. But yeah, couple injuries here. Not the way you want to start things off, but we're persevering. There we go. Clicking things. Oh, my goodness. Fingers won't cooperate. There we go. All right. So now we'll continue here. Yeah, we just lost two more games in a row after winning three in a row. So it's not all that bad, but we did lose two games in a row prior to that. So we'd like to uh, continue with our dominating ways instead of reverting. There's yet another shutout. Uh, I don't know. that We had one earlier. Uh, did I already count that? Yeah, I think I did. I don't know how many shutouts we have, but it's a good amount. I mean, we're... I think we lost that game though. 27 11 and 1. Yeah, we lost Oh, we lost both those games in regulation. 1 to nothing and then 3 to 2. Not exactly what you want to see. But you know what? 27 11 and 1. Still good. Now, filter, going back towards more 2 to 1 win loss ratio. But hey, that's still really good. We're still going to be first in the division. Oh, wow. Not as by big of a margin as I thought. Boston's actually right behind us. Behind us by only three points. Same amount of games played. But then it drops off after that. Tampa Bay's at 45 points with an extra game. Us and Boston both have a game in hand on them. And we're 10 points ahead of Tampa. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a sizable gap between the first two and everyone else. And it looks like we're... Us and Boston are the two strongest teams in the NHL. So this division... It's going to be a bit interesting. Eichel leading in points only with 36. So either we've dropped off offensively, we're still getting 
a lot of different offense from a lot of different sources. Perhaps the point guys are chipping in more. So yeah, our goals against went up, but there was no way it was going to sustain below two all year. That would have been just too perfect. Uh, 3.49 goals four per game, goals against at 2.1 per game. That's just a very good ratio. That's I mean, can't have, ooh, power play dropped off, 19.8%, so maybe we should put McGrath back on there. Yeah, that's a pretty sizable drop. Penalty kill went up, though, 83.8%. Now, that's a good penalty kill. It's not great by any means, but it's a good one. I mean, we're, like, we're second. Well, actually, yeah, we are second in the division, so it is pretty good. Um, wow, we have not allowed a shorthanded goal, but we've scored five shorthanded goals, so our penalty kill... Is great at killing penalties, but can also generate some offense. I mean, we only have 39 games played, and to score five short-handed goals, that's quite impressive. 13-7-1 uh, and one on home ice, 14-4-0 and oh on the road. So home ice, we could get a bit better on. And again, 5-5-0 five, five and oh in the last 10, so a bit of a slump area for us. But we're not really complaining because we're 27-11-1. You don't, <laughs> don't really complain with a record like that. First in the NHL. Oh, hey. I'm a stickler for some details. Okay, yeah, we're very interesting. What is going on here? We're scoring a lot, but it's just from a lot of different sources by the looks of it. I mean, Eichel's got 36 points, Ovechkin with 33, Reinhardt 31, Middlestat 31, Marov with 30. He's on the third line, mind you. Sure, he's getting power play times, and he's got 10 points on the power play, so that is a lot. But still, 20 points in 39 games played on the third line is... It puts him on pace for 40-plus points, which is very good. So now he's listed as a second liner. And with Skinner being down here with only 24 points, I say it's time to move up Mayorov and move Skinner down to that third line. He'll still have power play time, so he shouldn't get demoralized. But, yeah, I mean, they're producing kind of the same now. You look at Mayorov, he's sort of hybrid. Skinner, same thing, hybrid. And when you move him onto that top line where McGrath is the goal scorer and middle stat is the playmaker... I think Mayorov should slot in very well into there, so I think it's time to try that. But Chensky's doing very well on the fourth line. Give him that extra time. He shouldn't be... No, just from some locker room interactions, which is interesting. We should have a pretty good locker room. guys. Well, at least from the guys that we've drafted. Don't know about some of the others. Byfield. Yeah, he's liking it. Not producing much, but he's plus seven. And that's the fourth line we're talking about, so... Pretty damn good. I mean, if you only got nine points and you're a plus seven, I'd say you're doing pretty good. Brickley turning out to be really good. Yeah, that fourth line is surprisingly good. Again, our team's really good, so the goal differential might be uh, way, way up there. So Darlene starting to produce now. Only seven points in 17 games played. Dealing with injury, though. It's going to be a tough year for him. At the top here, we've got Seth Jones and Rasmus Ristolainen tied for points. Kind of creepily, both with three goals and 22 assists, so they're kind of going tit for tat. The only th they they even have what the hell? They're almost identical. 22 penalty minutes each, 70 shots each. Shot percentage is obviously the same. Power play production isn't that, but all everything in here besides their plus miles, which is 24 and 29, matches. It's a little creepy. Um, Barry's got 11 points plus 11. Airhoff's got 10 points. Not bad. Um, Ruder jumped in there, had seven points of 22 games played. So kind of interesting that Dawn's having a bit of a off year here. He's still with no points on the power play. And Risto's only got three. You know what? I really think I got to put back in. I got to put back in. What's his name? McGrath. I really think so. Lukanen's still doing well. 28 games played. Great save percentage and goals against. Olmark, same thing. Oh, my goodness. Olmark, 16 games played. He's got 12 wins, only two losses. He's got four shutouts, and his personal stats are like that. The save percentage, 9.35, and goals against 1.72. That is crazy good. Our goaltender tandem is top-notch. I don't know what else to say, but we need to get that power play right. That's it's in the back of my mind now and bugging me. So I think we got we to gotta put McGrath back on there. Because, damn, it seemed to be doing really well with him on there. So now the question is, do I replace Ristolainen or Darlene? Makes more sense to replace... Uh, technically, Darlene's is not seeming to produce well this year, but if we want to give him a chance... Uh, that's a tough call. He's got the better offensive stats, and it does make some more sense. And Ristolainen, 
He should be having that top penalty kill, or is no, that's actually Seth Jones. Penalty kill is doing so well, I don't want to replace him. So, But we need Seth Jones to be at least getting that plus power play. So someone's got to sit here. You know, Ristolainen's been on there the whole year, only has three assists. Let's let's give a chance to Dahlin because he's only got 17 games played and he hasn't been on the power play. Actually, he has been on the power play for all of them, whatever. Um, yeah, we're going to, I guess, go two lefties here. But let's see. Let's see what happens. Ben McGrath, at least he seems to shoot a lot from the point when he was on the power play. Two goals, four points. In that short amount of time, he was on it. So we've really got to try him out again on the point. So... We'll do that, and then we're going to try Mayrov on that second line, Skinner on the third with Thompson and Nylander. He should still do well there, and again, with the power play time, that should keep him happy enough, I think, to not be uh, getting any morale hits. We'll see. But yeah, I definitely want to try Mayrov up there because he's just doing so well. We need a bit more production in our top six, I think. First line isn't doing as well as it did last year. But we'll see if maybe this spark ignites everyone. It's, it also might be a bit of our power play. Because Ovechkin, Eichel, Reinhardt are probably suffering a bit from not getting as much power play points. I mean, that's a pretty steep drop. We were at 23%. Now we are down below 20%. So definitely want to uh, address that. All right. So let's get another month done. I didn't check the progress reports right there. But we'll do that in this next uh, after this next stretch here. See how our uh, prospects are growing. Another loss right there. 5 to 1. All right, answered back with a win. Let's get back on that winning side of things. We've definitely been losing a few games. There's another one, 2-1 to one loss. Just sometimes we're not okay. I was going to say sometimes we don't get production. Then we just beat the New York Rangers 10-1. to one. Well, are we consistent? Yes, we come back with a five-goal game and then a 4-3 to three loss in overtime. So three goals in regulation, good enough. Then answer back with another 5-1 to one loss. So when we lose, we kind of get uh, stomped sometimes. Besides that 2-1 to one loss to a... Blackhawks, but those games are tough. There's an 8-4 to four loss. What is happening right now? Defense. We got to get back on uh, back on the swing of things. No, we don't want Fanic. Hmm. All right, central scouting. Let's, let's get some hopefully good news. And then go back to that sim where... Ooh, I doubt they're going to be high elites. Yeah, it's that same story again. All right, still no steals found. Scouts got to hurry up here. Come on, low elites, anything? Bueller, all right, two, almost. So that's good, a left winger and a sniper. They should be low elites by looking at where they're drafting, but there could be low top sixes in there, so keep scouting them. Not the greatest of scouting work going on right now. Is New York going to get revenge against us? Well, it's not showing because it does that glitch, but we just lost against Dallas. Shout out 2 nothing. What is happening here? No, we beat New York 5-3, to three, but... We are losing some games. Now, these are against good teams, granted, but we have to be able, be able to beat those teams. I mean, if we're going to be a good team, we have to beat good teams come the playoffs. So that's kind of not a great sign that we just lost three games to pretty tough opponents. And that may be actually happening consistently here. I don't think Samuelson was out. Was he? No, that was... Oh, my goodness. Kronholm really jumped up. Unless he was at that overall. Good thing that injury took place. Now we actually have him scouted. I mean, he's probably actually going to become a top six guy. <laughs> That's kind of cool. But yeah, Samuelson. No, he was, he was not even out. He's up there. Game's line. All right. 33-16-1. So we've actually now, counting in the overtime losses, fallen completely out of a 2-1 to win-loss ratio, which isn't great. We actually lost the lead on the division. So, yeah, that was not a great... And, I mean, 44 points is our top point producer with 50 games played. If our goals for has really dropped off, we would be worried, except it really hasn't. But our goals against is keeps going up, which is worrying, definitely worrying, because that was seeming to be one of our strengths here. Power play percentage actually dropped further, 18.3%. What's happening with our power play? I guess... Dolan off and Rista lined it in. Maybe Dolan's just having an off year. I don't know what to say. Six and four in the last ten. It seems like every time we check these stats, we've kind of had a slump section, which we started out really hot. So it's understandable. Look at McGrath go. Holy. 
Uh, Mayorov, 36 points. He's done well. Skinner actually doing better on the third line. So hard to say, but it looks like our third line overall is doing, or second line overall is doing better. Again, hard to say. Rissa line in 33 points still, leading that in, for defense. Dahlin, 15 points in 20 games played. Like, he is producing. He's got two points on the power play in a shorter amount of time than Rissa line in three. So it's kind of close. I mean, what is the issue, though? Because our power play keeps dropping off. Is it the forwards on there? McGrath, he's got two more points since we put him back on there. That's not bad. What is the issue here? Ovechkin's only got seven points on the power play. That's kind of a big issue. Middlesat's got ten. And Ovi just might be falling off, although he's still got the stats. He's just not seeming to get the production here, which is fine. We're only paying him, I mean, 44 points in 50 games. He's 37. Like, I'm maybe judging him a bit too hard because of his Ovi after the year he had last year. He's obviously not going to do that this year, but seven power play points, only three goals. That... I don't know. To me, that's that's low because he's the only one on the first unit. He's got one, two, three guys higher than him on the second unit. So maybe it's time that Ovi takes a back seat on the power play. And Mayorov maybe gets a chance because he looks like a goal scorer on the power play. So maybe we move him up from the point, put Ovi on that point on the second unit, which would mean he would still get first unit time because on the defensive pairing, they can get matched up however they want. That might be something to think about. Uh, Rista Linen, 33 points. Jones, 28. Barry with 16. Darlene with 15 now. So he is, he's catching back up there. So I think I will leave him on the power play. we got to make something up on that power play, definitely. And uh, actually, Lukanen has gotten visibly worse. That's a pretty big drop-off. Hopefully, he can turn that around. Olmark is still doing great. But overall, we've all dropped. So Lukanen not going to have any like spectacular year by the looks of things. But as long as he doesn't keep dropping off further, I'll be okay with it. I, if he starts dropping off even more, then I'll be very worried because he started off really good. And if he drops off further than that, it's actually not great. Okay, so before I check progress reports, I want to make sure, uh, remember to do those line changes here for our power play. See if we can get that going again because it's below 20%. I don't think this team should ever have a power play below 20% because they're ridiculously good. So what's the issue here? Thinking maybe try Mayorov up. That's what I'm thinking. Try him on the top unit. Let's see what Reinhardt's been doing on the power play. He's only got seven points as well. So you know what? Maybe we keep Ovi there. and Maybe we just have too many passers. Because this guy, well, he's half and half. Darlene is just going to be... Yeah, he's going to be just an assist guy on the power play. Eichel is an assist guy too. So yeah, I think we just need couple more yeah we need Ovi and Mayorov on that top unit so who's going to take the point I'll put Skinner on the point there that makes a bit more sense and then we'll have Reinhardt and Nylander with Milstadt <laughs> I'm questioning myself now because that's interesting unless mm, Skinner it does scores it does blast some home from the point Jones does not. Now it seems like we just have not enough shooters on this second unit. Uh, it's a balancing act. Hmm. You know what? Let's give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I don't know. Might as well try it for a month. Let's just try that. If it doesn't work, then obviously we'll revert to something else. But if it does work, then we win either way. So if we don't see that jumping above, oh my fucking god! Don't tell me this crashed. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Had a uh, crash once again, and you know I'm gonna keep that in there because you guys deserve to know that crashes still happen. Just for some of you who might be asking for this for Christmas, be aware they do still happen. So get it for a discount if you can. Um. So luckily, all the changes saved. So the autosave kicked off at the right moment for us, and we I didn't have to go back and do anything. So we're going to try out these lines for the power play and then keep simming here. We're in February. Trade deadline is coming up, but we're going to check progress reports. So let's do that before I forget. <laughs> uh, 
Good stuff. All right, so Reinhardt, Ovechkin, that's all stat growth. That's going to be a combination for Ovechkin of decline and stat growth. So he's keeping himself boosted at 90 overall, age 37, which is pretty ridiculous. But it is Ovi. He's a beast. Um, Olmark, yeah, we know that. I think this is mostly going to be stat growth from everyone here. Besides Bachensky, yeah, Bachensky's got some natural growth in there, as well as statistical and morale growth. So he's a... Uh, He's loving it. He's, he's down there on the fourth line. Doesn't seem to be complaining. Does have that PK time, so it's probably helping him out immensely. Moose is done growing. Mayrov. Hopefully that's a bit of nat. That is all natural. Okay, deking, hand-eye passing, and puck control went up. Awareness still at 88, which is good. What else went up? There's one more. That's only four. And it says five. Oh, no, it says four here. Sin is blind. All right. Check out our rookies here in the system. Christensen. 19 years of age is now at 56 overall. This guy's looking good. Defenseman, right-handed defenseman, which we kind of need coming up. He's now 75 overall at age 20. He's on great pace. Let's see. He's also got 30. No, my goodness. He has 42 points in 38 games played. And I, I believe he's... I hope he's in the juniors with those kind of numbers. If he's somewhere else, he'll be kind of a god. Because those are ridiculously good for anywhere else with stronger competition. But I don't think he will be there. His passing's at 81. Offensive awareness at 85. So at 75 overall, those are pretty good stats. How's his defense? Ooh, awareness is at 86. And that's good. Shot blocking and stick shaking at 79 apiece. So that's a bit on the lower side for being at 75 overall. I'd like to see those around 81. But the awareness is incredible. This guy could be a very solid top four guy for us. Risto's pretty... Uh, set in that top two role, but I have a feeling this guy could get up to like 86, 87, maybe even 88 and settle into the top four for us, which would be very good because, I mean, damn, look at, look at it. So Barry will be probably gone next year. We'll actually probably tr ship him off and get something in return and then maybe extend Seth Jones to a couple more years just to kind of get as much out of him as we can because, well, you see how he's doing. He's, he's a huge piece. And we had him on a really good deal. Anyway, uh, Meyer, 18 years old only and 67 overall. He has been growing like a weed. Look at that. Plus 11 to his uh, puck skills category. Wow. Discipline went up to <laughs> by 14. Offense awareness went up by 18. Just this is some crazy growth. Holy crap. Skating is a bit on the weaker side, but he might not be a great skater. But luckily... It's not too important to the sim, I don't believe. Betts is also 75 overall now, only 19. Not as crazy growth as uh, the other guys, but, I mean, he's been growing steadily. Uh, locking in. That's decent. 660 overall at 19. He's a bit behind schedule, but with top four potential, we'll see. Jalmerson, on the other hand. Now, this guy started kind of high because we drafted him, I believe, in the first round. But 70 overall at age 18 is... Again, very good. And this guy's another right-handed, so we're going to have actually a lot of competition between our right-handed defensemen coming up soon. It always happens like that. You always seem to draft a bunch of lefties and then a bunch of righties, and you can't just have a good mix of each coming up in your system. You always have to do weird things until you can get a good uh, <laughs> a good uh, core together. Now, Bali here, however the hell you pronounce this, I don't know if he's, I don't think he's signed. I can check. No, he's still in the Dell. 17 points in 33 games played. And that's a defenseman. In a, a, not a, an incredibly strong league, but it's stronger than the juniors, I believe. I think that European league is stronger. Uh, but, I mean, look how much growth we're getting. This is kind of crazy. Nugent Hopkins has now also jumped up. I don't... Yeah, he's still, he's still playing juniors. Just making sure that none of these guys are in my AHL, but I don't believe they are. Wow, this is a lot of growth. Hella growth in it. <laughs> Hilariously, Pilstrom. Dude hasn't played at all. This is kind of sucky because we know he's an elite, although he's only 47 overall. Whatever the hell league he's in is not playing him, so that kind of really sucks because it's like we have to sign him and try to play him somewhere, but he won't really. I mean, I could, but man, how good would he be? I think this guy's just trade bait, really, because he's not he's not playing in the league where we got him, and I don't want to give him a contract for three years, entry level or not, if I'm ugh, not going to be able to use him that well. 
rough. Yeah, that's that's kind of sucky, but whatever. Because I'm still not sure about Lukanen. But he's very low overall, so his his growth would have been very slow going no matter what. All right, well, food for thought right there. Perhaps trade. All right. Continuing here. We'll get up to the deadline. All right. Just make sure I sim on the right thing here. Let's see how this uh, new power play does. And how our team does overall. Because we need to improve our goals against a bit. We have definitely slacked on that. I mean, we're winning those games. But again, three goals allowed, four goals allowed. Ooh, they want Locking in. They want Fleischer. You want my prospects for terrible people on terrible contracts. I'm going to check it just because I want to laugh at them. Anaheim, Ian Cole, two more years at 2.7. He's 81 overall. Yeah, no. That's terrible. I mean, it's not a bad contract, but... Why, like, why is, why is our blocker... Why do they think that we want those guys? <laughs> That's my question. Our defense... We, every single one of our defensemen playing is better than that guy. Uh, Loxanen's fully healed. That's good. So he can hop back in there, but do I want to sit Kronholm now at this point? Because, damn, we've seen him at 76. He's good. Murley... I mean, he's actually doing pretty good, too. Kind of hard to say any of these guys. Obviously, we need, we need to play roll off. 22 to 76. I can probably sit this guy for a bit longer. Yeah, as good as he is doing, he is a minus. And I do, I think I do want to favor Loxon in here. Uh, you know what? Maybe not. He is a righty, sure, but he's 23 now. Still only 74 overall. You know what? He can sit. Kronholm is the chosen one and although the righty is great we do have other several other righties here so we'll be all right let's keep in Kronholm then we could pick and choose what our uh, future top six defense will look like and really get settled on that I want to make sure these guys uh oh Gooley is actually suffering from lack of ice time which is not both of them weird I guess the penalty kill is just not enough where they are Okay, we got it. Well, they do have extras. Maybe I switch them in the 4-on-4 four four to the second pairing, which is kind of crazy, but fuck it. We, we don't want them to get too pissed. Can't really afford that, so I'm going to do that. I might even double shift them. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to double shift them. <laughs> They'll have both the second and third pairings, which, again, there's not too much 4-on-4 four four time, but if it's a little bit extra ice time, then it's good for us. That sucks, man. I was hoping we'd be able to get away with it. I thought they would have enough ice time, but apparently not. Although they are doing well. I mean, they're both... Yeah, their plus minus is great. They're doing so good in that top six role. I mean, they're a big big part of our team here. Ugh. All right, Luke, and get good. Let's go. All right, another back-to-back. -back. So both of our goalies are going to get a start here. <laughs> Ugh. 5-4 to four loss here. I hope that wasn't Lukanen, but it probably was because he seemed to have been dropping off here pretty steadily since that opening uh, whatever we went on. That was a good win. one to nothing shutout. That's a tough victory. Man, New York just can't beat us. We beat them 10-1 to one, and then like 5-3. to three. Now we just beat them one to nothing. <laughs> they want to give us Tuka Rask for first. In what universe does this trade make sense game? We have two 84 overall goaltenders which are doing great, and you want to send us an 86 goaltender. No thanks. Appreciate your uh, <laughs> interest in my pick. And they want to give me Rourke Chartier in a second. For first? What is this? Hold on. <laughs> what the hell? That's, that's terrible. Like, I know they're Second's going to be actually kind of good, but what the heck? That's still a terrible trade. It's trying to send me a bottom six player at best and a second for a first. Like, no. You got to give me a third liner if you want if you want that to go through. And I don't need a third liner. We're now 41-17-1. So uh, 40 wins before the deadline. Less than uh, 20 regulation losses before the deadline. Probably don't want this guy, but I always like to check him anyway. 78 overall. Yeah, no, not with two years left. If I needed some extra depth, I'd definitely swoop them up. But we got Ruda, so don't need that. Now they want, no, these trades, though. I'm going I'm to be stubborn and not clear my trade block because we're almost to the deadline. 
and that's what I do. Please don't crash again. Thank you. All right, let's stop it here just to make sure I didn't accidentally sim past the deadline on accident. Let's see if we can beat the Sharks right there. Sam Reinhardt's been injured. Okay, it's just a bruised hand. Only till March 7th. That's not too long, but that is a bit annoying. But I think we're just going to shift everyone up here. I could move up Skinner. But he's actually doing really well on that third line. Actually, not really well. 18 plus 21 is only 39, actually. So he's not. he might, might not even hit 50 points. You know what? I could move him up. You know what I might actually I'm gonna yeah I'm actually gonna move Skinner back up yep makes a bit of sense all right and then probably move up Bochensky here yeah move up Bochensky and then we'll sub in our depth guy who is Johnston the enforcer so finally we get to use our enforcer here we finally had a forward injury <laughs> let's put in Ross Johnson even though he's, I don't think he was an enforcer I think it was like a power forward or something like that but I think he fights. He's 6'5", 236. That's, he's the absolute unit. Okay, obviously we don't want him on the power play. So who gets the time here? That's a good question. Because it's not for too long. But we are not really in a position to give it to someone else, I don't think. Yeah, and I can't exit because, you know what? I will exit. Just let me put in Johnston everywhere. Just so I can exit and then I can switch it up later. Actually, not here because that doesn't make sense. Marov's already in there. Skinner in there? Yeah, Skinner's already in there. Uh, middle stat's already in there. So, Nylander probably. Just to fill in for now. No. McGrath isn't in there. What? Yeah, he's not. Okay. We'll probably have him down in place of Skinner as well here. All right, let's just exit. Check the stats. Let it finish simming here. 2-1 to one win. Did we lose a game in that month? Yes, we lost one. We lost that one to Vegas, but then we won every other game. 44-17-1. and one. That should be good enough for the lead in the division again. If it's not, then Boston's on steroids. Nope. We're heading them by now, but three points, and the lead against any other team in the NHL is by seven points, so... We are in very good shape. Ovechkin's still leading in points, 54 and 62. So I definitely think we're just getting a lot of spread out scoring from uh, three different lines. So that's why you're going to see that those first line numbers dip. Actually, yeah, our goal's four went up. It's 3.61. What the heck? That's so much. We're scoring like beasts. 2.32 goals again. So that's improved. But power play still only at 19%. Very weird. Very weird. I mean, it's, you know, quote unquote, sort of improved with those changes, but it's not anything big. So, yeah, we're just kind of struggling to score on that power play. But good news is penalty kill is 84.7%, which is the best we've ever had it. And we've had seven shorthanded goals, which is, uh, besides Toronto, it was double plus what everyone else had. <sighs> Damn it. Stupid Toronto. All right, 21, 10, and 1 on home ice, 23, and 7 on the road, 9, and 1 in the last 10. So, yeah, not a month where we had any sort of slump at the end. We just powered through. Okay, let's see the point production, or the, uh, yeah, individual point production here. Ooh, Eichel actually tied with Ovi in points, 54 and 54. And then Reinhardt right below with 52 points, but he will drop off a bit as he's now injured. Only for a couple games, so it won't be too bad. Middlestat also has 52 points, and then McGrath is 51, so that's, that's why you're seeing those numbers drop off. We, at this point in the season with 20 games left, we have five people with 50 points. And that's really good. Marov's got 45 now. Skinner with 39. Nylander also with 39. Like, consider that these are both now third liners. Nylander's been a third liner the entire year. So, yeah, we've definitely gotten a lot of different point scoring. And even the fourth line, you look at Bachensky, 28 points on the fourth line. No special teams time. Byfield with 20. I mean, that's pretty good. Let's see. Which one of those guys are getting shorties? Neither of them. It's Tage Tom Oh, Bachensky and Tage Thompson. Bachensky's got two shorties. Tage Thompson's got one. McGrath has got two. Yeah, McGrath is actually a great. I love having this guy because not only can he penalty kill, but he's an offensive threat. That's awesome. I've never really had a sniper who could who could penalty kill and you know get a couple shorthanded goals throughout the year. Not complaining. Okay, and defensively, there's Ristolainen with 38 points, so no one's jumping out in the point scoring department whatsoever. 
and Darlene's only got three assists on the power play. So really, I think you can almost make the argument that our back end is not producing as much offense as they were last year. And this is a very good argument you can make. And maybe that's actually hurting our power play because, dude, they both had about the same amount of time on that power play and they both still only had like three assists within that span. Yeah. That's low. But Seth Jones is doing great on that second unit, seven assists. But maybe I need to shift things around again. Maybe I should use Reinhardt on the point and have Ovi just as the sniper on that second power play unit. Maybe that's what needs to happen. All right, Lucan and his stats actually sort of improved. He's not going to be taking home any hardware, but as his first year as a starter, only age 23, these are good numbers. You know, 0.917 save percentage, 2.4 goals against. They're not great, like I said, but these are solid starter numbers for your first year as a starter. And Olmark is probably going to be the best backup at the NHL. 20 wins, 7 losses, 4 shutouts, 0.925 save percentage with 2.12 goals against. I'm very comfortable. I can go with either of these guys in the playoffs. We'll probably start with Lukanen, but we'll throw an Olmark if we need to, no question. Actually, it's a tough call, man. Maybe I want to start with Olmark. Who knows? All righty. Well, I mean, Olmark has got me 40 points in 29 games played. That's above and beyond what I expect out of a backup. And he's not really a backup either. He's only got 30 games played, which is Lukanen only has 40. But this is a good transition year. It's a very good transition year. All right, and our only rookie is uh, Blyfield, or Byfield, and he's not going to be taking home any hardware. All right, well, here we are at the trade deadline. There's some parts of our, I think internally is what is the only things that we need to change. I can't really think of a trade. I mean, we're first in the NHL. Do you have to make a trade at that point? Probably not, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll think about that power play stuff. You guys can let me know about that. Remember to leave that like, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you. Be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow, and you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.